Mammals and their relatives during the age of dinosaurs are generally not thought much of by many people, but although usually considered to have been small rodent-like creatures scurrying out of the way of the great reptiles that dominated the Mesozoic, there was actually a surprising amount of diversity and remarkable evolutionary achievements going on in the lineage at this time. A prime example of how mammaliforms have been underestimated in the past is the discovery of Castor Accorda. Revealed to the world in 2006, this animal lived about 164 million years ago in the Middle Jurassic of China. Among many of the incredible features identified in this fossil, the thing that really sticks out is the fact that Castor Accorda was clearly adapted for a semi-aquatic lifestyle. This was a huge revelation when it was first announced, as it demonstrates how truly diverse our ancient relatives were in the Mesozoic, and that parts of the mammaliform lineage had already moved back to the waters millions and millions of years sooner than we previously realised. Not only that, but it is currently the largest known mammaliform from the Jurassic, with a total body length of about 42.5cm, and a weight of between 500 and 800 grams. Despite looking like a hybrid between an otter and a beaver, Castor Accorda is actually a member of a completely extinct group of mammaliforms called Docodonta. This makes the classification of this animal as a mammal slightly more complicated, since technically it is not a true mammal if we go by the crown group definition, which only includes the ancestors of every mammal alive today and all their descendants. However, there are other ways of defining mammals that would include the Docodontans, but to avoid as much confusion as possible, I'll just refer to Castor Accorda as a mammal relative, or a mammaliform. The resemblance to beavers and otters was not lost on the paleontologists who described this organism though, since the genus name, Castor Accorda, means beaver tail, and the species name, Lutra similis, means similar to an otter. So, what features indicated to the paleontologists that this animal must have spent a lot of time in the water? The fossilised remains of this organism were thankfully very well preserved, and so a lot of detail could be made out that helped the scientists with their interpretations. One of the most obvious adaptations to a semi-aquatic lifestyle was the tail, which was covered in scales with some hairs in between, and it was very broad, sharing a strong resemblance to beaver tails. Additionally, the vertebrae making up the tail were compressed and completely flattened towards the tip, incredibly similar to the condition in beavers and otters, so it can be inferred that Castor Accorda used this structure in order to propel itself through the water, just like modern day beavers do. The fact that this characteristic evolved millions of years before beavers ever existed, and that it appeared in a completely different mammaliform lineage, makes this a truly exceptional example of convergent evolution. But the tail is not the only indication of aquatic tendencies. The fossil is so incredibly well preserved that traces of what appear to be webbing between the toes of the hind feet can also be seen, again just like in beavers, suggesting that the organism also employed the use of these webbed feet in its underwater locomotion. The detail of the fossil's preservation does not end there though, as it's also possible to see the remains of a furry integument that would have been present on the animal in life. There are fossilised impressions of guard hairs, as well as carbonised underfur, which, being very dense and shorter than the guard hairs, would have served to keep water from getting to the skin. The discovery of fur on a docodontin means that this sort of integument must not only be ancestral to the entire crown mammal group, but also to some mammaliform lineages outside the crown group, such as docodonta itself. The teeth of Castor Accorda are also worth mentioning. These structures are another feature of the animal's anatomy that show how the creature was adapted for a watery life, since the molars are different in shape to other members of the group, and are instead relatively similar to the teeth seen in living seals and otters. Comparing them to these modern species, this shows that Castor Accorda had molars that were pretty well adapted for eating fish and marine invertebrates, prey they would certainly have come into a lot of contact with in their habitat. Interestingly, however, this prehistoric mammaliform also has adaptations in its skeleton for digging. Various characteristics of the front limbs indicate that they were very strong in life, and perfectly suited for burrowing into the ground. The paleontologists compared these limb features to those found in the duck-billed platypus, an animal that both swims and digs, so it seems Castor Accorda probably would have led a very similar lifestyle to this modern mammal. It's also suggested that since it seems digging adaptations were possibly an ancestral feature of the Docodontans, these strong limbs ended up helping a lot with their transition to water. Additionally, there seems to be another member of the Docodontans, an animal named Haldanodon, that may have been semi-aquatic too. 
It had previously been hypothesized that this creature was adapted for life in the water, and with the description of Castor Accorda, it seems very likely that a lot of Docodontons actually inhabited these sorts of environments. So, the discovery of Castor Accorda and the realization of how it lived has therefore overturned a lot of misconceptions about mammaliform evolution in the Mesozoic. These ancient relatives of ours were way more diverse than had been previously assumed, already adapting to niches in the environment that distant lineages of true mammals would once again conquer millions of years later. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.